Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sean Mitchell with Co-Listings Real Estate here with Jill Horch from Thrive Real Estate. And this is our third video. Yep. This is our third installation for Arapaho Acres, a really beautiful neighborhood here in the Denver area that I'll let you tell everyone about because it is extremely charming, a flashback to a very timeless period. So you have a new listing yes. that is about, in fact, by the time you're watching this, it will have just hit the market. Why don't you tell everyone the address and a little bit about the house? Hi, um, I'm Jill Hutch and I'm just about to uh, list this home in Arapahoe Acres. I live in Arapahoe Acres. It's a very iconic, magical, mid-century modern neighborhood and the house that I'm about to list is 3059 South Cornell Circle and so it's in the inner circle it is a corner lot and what's really special is it's the Dion house and uh, Joseph Dion actually built this house for himself he was the second architect after Sternberg for the neighborhood and um, so there's some special touches in this home. Now with this neighborhood Every house was named after the original owner. Correct. And so that's why that's why you hear the the Dion house, right? Yeah, exactly. What's yes. the, what's the correlation? What's the significance of of Dion? Um, he was the, the the second architect in the neighborhood, but there's also some other interesting facts about Dion, correct? Yeah. So he came here after the war and um, World War Two, and um, he he um, actually organized um, for Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, to, to come to Denver University and there's pictures of him and the pictures of him at, in the Union Station and um, it's really exciting because he actually was influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright. He built 35 homes in this neighborhood and this one he built for himself. So, you know, it's just really exciting just to have that direct Frank Lloyd Wright influence. And, and so there are some, some very personal touches with this house, I'm sure that he he, he added. So what are some of those things that you think are noteworthy about this particular house? So the things that I, I especially like about the house that I see that, you know, each home was custom built, so each home is different. And some of the features I like about this house um, are, for example, the fireplace is, you know, it's a brick fireplace and it's, you know, phenomenal mid-century modern um, fireplace, log fireplace, and then um, some other features are, I really like the kitchen because it's in pristine, original condition. You know, the oven, I mean, it doesn't even look like it's, it's ever been used. It's like <laughs> so 1950s. And he, um, apparently he used to hang up artwork out in the garden, it, and there is a carport that was very, you know, characteristic of the time. And, in, and then the bathroom, for example, is um, one, of the, one of the bathrooms is completely original and it's like little hand painted tiles and, you know, like a towel rack that's, um, that's just sort of special to this neighborhood, the design, just little things like that, that, you know, if you ever want to come and see this house, I can show you these special features. Yeah, there is really a, an attention to detail here and very typical. Uh, mid-century modern, I think, but but very well maintained. I would say, you know, I'm I'm looking at some of the some of the features of the house. I can see that the 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 stain on the the ceiling wood, the wood beams look really really fresh. I'm looking at the brick around the fireplace and the ledge are are in fantastic condition. So I I I think they've done a great job at 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 preserving the history, but also maintaining what you see on the interior of the house. Uh, how many bedrooms and how many bathrooms is this? How, how large is this house? So this house is 1,386 square feet. And there also is an outdoor, um, indoor kind of living space, kind of patio area with soji doors. So you have like all of the extra room in the back. And then um, it was built in 1956 has three bedrooms, two baths. Great. This is this is very much a ranch style house, yes. correct? There's no multi-level, no, no no basement for someone who wants to not go up and down stairs. This is probably a really nice house for them, right? Perfect. Yeah. And there are some houses in the neighborhood and we you know, it's, um, because it's a historical district, we do, you know, sort of encourage that preservation, but some people do um, kind of build a basement if, if that was wanted, they go down. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't affect the actual lines of the house. Mm -hmm. When can people come and take a look at this if they want to schedule uh, a showing and see this house in person? Well, I think they should schedule a show with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, that's very, very, very kind of you. But but this this house is is on the market right now. Yes. By the time you're watching this, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to come and, and take a look at it if uh, you, you really love the mid-century modern style. Also, l l let's also talk about the proximity to to um, where everything is at in terms of um, this neighborhood. So you've got easy access to Hamden 285. Uh, you've got easy access to uni university, mm -hmm. uh, stone throw away from uh, um, Denver University. Mm -hmm. um, you've, al you've also got, you're not too far away from I-25 as well, whether you're accessing that from university or Hamden. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably, what, with no traffic, maybe 10, 15 minutes from downtown, right, Union Station, all mm -hmm. the wonderful things that are happening in Lodo and Highlands. Um, are there any other features around the, around the neighborhood that you can think of that are noteworthy? So um, it's actually near the tech center too. I've noticed That's that a good we point. have a lot of showings at the tech center. You know, people from the tech center want to kind of be in between downtown and here. So that's another thing that I've noticed. And we've, we're getting a whole lot of different restaurants popping up. This area is, you know, really happening. We're just on the outside of Englewood, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of really cool restaurants walking distance. South Broadway as mm -hmm. well is probably mm -hmm. yep. not too yep. far yep. away, yep. too. Yep. You're seeing a huge resurgence of, of restaurants, bars, dive mm -hmm. bars, uh, mm -hmm. very unique, trendy, hipster-style yep. uh, restaurants and, and areas to hang out there. It's, it's happening. And the other thing I wanted to mention is we are having an open house tomorrow. And um, from 11 till 3, uh, we're going to have some like Easter eggs and coffee and banana bread. And so, you know, feel free to come to the open house tomorrow. That would be the 13th. I just had to check my, my calendar. So that would be the 13th yes, of, of April. So depending yes. on when you're watching this video, it may, yes. be, may be after the fact. But if you miss the open house, you can always schedule a, a showing to walk through it and do, do a private walkthrough. Um, so, Jill, thank you so much for taking time to talk about this beautiful listing here in Arapaho Acres. If you've got any questions, you can put them in the comments down below, or I'll also put my contact information at the end of this video in case you want to reach out directly. So, thanks again, Jill, thank and you. we'll talk soon. All right.